Imagine if you had to remember every step of your digestion process. Imagine if you were responsible for triggering them in the right sequence every time you ate. It's a complex process, takes over five hours and hundreds of steps. For most of us to remember to chew properly is a task hard enough. I wonder what would have happened if we had to remember the entire digestion sequence. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have to. <laughs> Evolution took care of it. It hard-coded the entire digestion sequence into our DNA. And not just digestion, growth, body functioning, and reproduction as well. Instructions to do all these behaviors were coded inside our system. But as our organisms evolved, we needed newer habits to survive. For example, you had to get into the habit of running every time you saw a predator. You couldn't sit there analyzing the situation. It had to be automatic. Evolution took care of that as well. It hard-coded that routine into our amygdala. So now every time we sensed danger behind the bushes, we instinctively ran. Now we are at a completely different stage of evolution. And we need different new habits to survive. You don't need to run away from predators, but you still need to run or else those burgers are going to kill you. <laughs> Over the past few hundred years, our food and environment has changed dramatically. And we need to adapt to it by forming newer habits like exercising, cycling, meditation and many more. But the instructions to do these behaviors, which are so critical for quality survival in this age, are not coded inside our system. I'm sad to break the news, but evolution has actually failed us here. After doing such an awesome job with the DNA and the amygdala, all it has left us with is motivation and guilt. So if you're very motivated, <laughs> so if you're very motivated to go to gym, you'll probably do that. Or if you have a feeling of guilt because you smoke, you might try quitting. Well, the lousy system doesn't work. <laughs> Let's admit that. Motivation dies after a period of time. That's why people stop going to gym. And guilt is something with which you start living with. That's why people relapse and start smoking again. So can we create better ways for us to form new habits? I first came across this problem when I took up running a few years back. I was working for a multinational company in Bangalore. And after three years of working there, I still couldn't understand what the hell I was doing. <laughs> so one fine day, I decided to quit my job. It can be very scary when you quit a job and you don't know what you want to do with your life. So to keep myself occupied, I decided to take up running with this friend. And we ran hard every day. We trained hard every day. We practiced hard every day. And later that year, I ran a marathon. I then trained for the world-famous Ironman Triathlon and in October 2014, became the youngest Indian to achieve it. Thank you. Nah, that's not me. That's a photoshopped image. <laughs> I gave up running in the first week itself. <laughs> but my friend did keep to it and he did run a marathon a year later. <laughs> And for me, this was intriguing because I could not understand why two people with similar level of motivation to start with had such dramatically different results in forming the same behavior. <laughs> I got hooked to the problem. I realized that motivation and guilt are great when you want to do something once. For example, if you want to wake up early because you have a 6 a.m. flight to catch, you'll probably do that. But if you want to wake up early every day, then plain motivation is not going to cut it for you. You need more scientific and predictable systems. That's exactly what we are trying to create at Zuzubi, the company that I formed with a few of my friends. So how do you do it? Our first inspiration came from a highly unlikely place, toothpaste. You see, brushing is a very recent habit that humans have acquired. Uh, till a few hundred years back, we didn't brush our teeth regularly. Bad oral hygiene was a huge problem. In fact, some have even speculated that the secret behind Mona Lisa's smile is cavities and yellow teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so when toothpaste first came to market, companies soon realized that not everyone was interested in brushing. And they faced an uphill task of getting people to brush daily. The industry solved for this habit by doing something incredible. They added a mint flavor. You see, for us to form any habit, three things should happen at the same time. There should be a cue which should trigger an activity. At the end of the activity, there should be a reward, and this is important, the reward should be immediate. When all of these three happen in the same sequence over and over again, we form a habit. But if either the trigger or the reward is missing, we will not form the habit. So when toothpaste didn't have mint in it, brushing was just a chore. There was no immediate reward for doing it. Mint changed that. When you brush with a toothpaste that is flavored with it, brushing leaves you with a cool sensation towards the end. We normally associate that cool sensation with freshness. 
So now when people brush, they felt fresh, they felt rewarded. Try brushing with a medicated toothpaste and you'll know exactly what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, so men became our first cue. And we started designing systems for immediate gratification. We converted habits like these into game-based challenges where you could collect immediate reward for doing the activity, much like games do. Pokemon Go, for example. Uh, and that's why they are so engaging. And by using simple gamification systems like these, we have been able to create meaningful engagement that increases your likelihood of forming that habit. But reward is just one part of the habit loop. If you don't couple it with a powerful trigger, rewards are meaningless. Normally, we set time-based triggers. So for example, if you want to do yoga in the morning, you'll probably set a reminder for it. And every day at 7 AM, your phone will start buzzing, reminding you to do yoga. Now, this and other similar time-based trigger systems don't take into account that you might have slept late yesterday, might be drunk, who knows. Uh, so today, preferably, you would want to do yoga a little later. Time-based triggers are not very effective because they lack context. That's why we are building contextual intelligence inside our system. Contextual intelligence is a marriage between contextual behavior and artificial intelligence. Sounds really complex, but it's actually not. All of us are already doing it in our daily lives. Let me give you an example. What is the first thing you do when you switch on your computer after reaching office? Do you check your email? Do you create a to-do list? Do you go grab a mug of coffee? Or do you log on to social media? Switching your computer on is a habit that sets a context. And we use this context to trigger other behaviors. We mostly do it subconsciously. But what if we can use this context consciously to trigger new activities? For example, if you want to drink more water, you can frame it something like this. Every time I switch on my computer, I'll go fill a bottle of water. You're already switching on your computer every day, but by making it the context of the next desired behavior, you can make it a very powerful trigger. That's what we are doing, and we are using artificial intelligence to make it happen. Our deep learning systems tries to understand a user, helps them curate their habit journey by identifying the right trigger, and then building a collaborative gameplay on top of it. This snapshot here is an example of how our AI talks to you helps you identify the right triggers. And we have been able to use systems like these to help over 100,000 people form many great habits on our platform in the last 18 months itself. Our systems are being used by organizations around the globe to drive positive behavior within their workforce as well. But to us, it's more than just that. Among the top five leading causes of death are conditions like diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. And all of these are about managing lifestyles, doing simple behavior changes like running, exercising, and avoiding coffee. Yet, millions of people die every year because they are not able to do these lifestyle changes. Why? Because they rely on motivation. Imagine a world where people can do these lifestyle changes with a level of predictability. How great would that be? Human race has evolved way too fast for natural evolution to code all these life-saving habits inside us. We'll have to do it ourselves. That's what we are doing at Zuzubi. We are extending the human DNA. Thank you.